Hey friends, what do you do when you mess up? You know, I hate it when I mess up. And it's embarrassing to admit it. And you can feel a lot of shame, guilt and shame. And with reason, right? Sometimes. David shows us how we should respond when we mess up. Psalm 32 and Psalm 51 are two of the most famous psalms. They reflect on, on David's prayer of confession and repentance after his sin uh, in the matter of his adultery with Bathsheba. Taking her when she was somebody else's wife and then murdering her husband to cover up and then pretending as if the baby, you know, uh, just, just trying to sweep it all under the rug. But God wouldn't let him, would he? He sent a prophet to accuse him to his face. And to his credit, David acknowledged his sin publicly, repented, and turned to the Lord. But the damage had been done. Uh, God's name had been dragged through the mud, and there were consequences to his sin. The baby died. God forgave him, but the baby died, and disaster kind of ran rampant in his household. But David shows us what to do when we mess up. We need to take it to God, confess it, forsake it, and experience the cleansing power of his forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Psalm 51 shows us how to do that. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what's evil in your sight, so that you're proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. In other words, that he was born with a sin nature. And he proved it by his actions, right? Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you've crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart of God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. He doesn't do that today, but he did then. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart of God you will not despise. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. So when you mess up, confess it. Take it to God. Confess it, repent, turn back to him, and he'll cleanse you and wash you whiter than snow. And part of David's uh, uh, legacy is that he accepted, received God's forgiveness, and rejoiced in that cleansing. I encourage you to do the same and be encouraged.